Charleston, South Carolina, the epitome of Southern graces, and dubbed the most polite and hospitable city in America by Southern Magazine, it's a place of elegance and slow poetic speakers, the heart of the American South. But beyond the rainbow-colored row houses, the huge city market, and the horse and buggy tours, there's a secret you know about. Once upon a midnight jury, the infamous Edgar Allan Poe had his heart broken by a beautiful southern belle, or so the story goes. But it wasn't she who broke off the romance, but her father, and she's still around to tell the tale. Well, sort of. Legend goes that Charleston's most seen ghost, the Lady in White, just may be Poe's Annabelle Lee. This story hits close to home because of a strange experience I had while visiting Charleston a few years ago. My husband and I walked the overgrown cemetery with our guide and a small group of people one dark August night. The air was thick with humidity and more than a little bit of fear. You see, the Unitarian Church in Charleston is the second oldest church in the city, built in 1772. Old churches equals old graves. And one other thing, because of their beliefs, Unitarians do not upkeep their cemetery grounds. So among the darkness of the overgrown trees and the creeping vines and the tall grass surrounding us, our guide whispered tales of the most popular ghost in Charleston. And to add even more creep factor to this scene, he said she was seen only a few days ago by a group he brought in. You have to understand, I'm no newbie to ghost tours. In fact, I've done so many that I've lost count. But this one was different. Our guide spoke with such confidence that we'd actually see something that I started to worry that we would. Because as much as I love ghost stories, I don't really want to see a ghost. Yeah, that's just not my thing. I'm in it for the thrill, not so much the reality. So from the moment we stepped foot into the cemetery, I was pretty much ready to bolt. But we couldn't, you see, we were fenced in, a tall gate separating us from the rest of the city. The dark kept us huddled together closely, trusting our guide to help us maneuver around the resting souls beneath. The church only allows one ghost tour into the cemetery at night, at least that was the case when we were there, and that night it was us. My heart thumped, thumped <laughs> in my ears, and I had a hard time concentrating. The guide went on to tell us of three possibilities of who the ghost may be. He began to tell us the story of a young soldier who fell in love with a woman named Anna Revenal. The two felt madly in love and saw each other every chance they got. But Anna's father didn't think the soldier was good enough for his well-bred daughter. No, he wouldn't have any part of it. He, in fact, forbade it. But the two continued seeing each other in secret at the cemetery. When her father found out, he arranged for the soldier to be transferred out of Fort Moultrie to a fort near Baltimore. While he was away, Anna became depressed and then fell ill. Edward came back to be with her when he found out about her illness, but she had already died. Her father, blaming the soldier for his daughter's death, refused to allow the soldier to mourn at her grave. He had six graves dug and never put up a headstone, so the young man wouldn't know which one belonged to his beloved. The soldier who had enlisted under an assumed name was never really suited for the army and eventually became known for his real talents. He wrote under his real name, Edgar Allan Poe. Then our guide began reciting the Annabelle Lee poem, and all of us froze. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived with whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child, in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee, so that our high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels not half so happy in heaven went envying her and me. Yes. That was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, 
of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle, and the stars never rise but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle. And so all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life, and my bride, in the sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. As he spoke those words, we saw movement in the pitch black cemetery. A white, foggy image seemed to emerge. At first I thought I was seeing things, wondering if my imagination was playing tricks on me. But then I saw the people next to me pointing and whispering clinging closer to each other. And then my husband leaned in and asked me, do you see that? Literal goosebump shell. (laughs) My breath caught as the figure swayed to the rhythm of our God quoting the poem from memory. And I could not believe my eyes. And even as I'm saying it right now, I wonder if it was real. How could it be? It seems like such a strange event that my mind has mentally cataloged it as can't be true. Afterward, our God escorted us out of the cemetery, but many of us stopped to photograph where we believed we saw her, the lady in white, or something in white, remembering her lost love. I have an iPhone, and it took a live photo. For those who don't know what that is, it's a photo that records movement while you're taking the picture. The flash was on, so you can see the flash brightening in the photo and eventually snapping. There was no one in front of me or beside me. My husband was standing behind me and the picture looks like nothing unusual. Spanish moss hanging in a tree, a gravestone, darkness. But the live shot caught something else, a dark figure, the body black, but the head almost phases out. It's so strange. I saw it in my phone as I took it and then nearly ran out of the cemetery, not wanting to stay there one more minute. Here's the actual live photo so you can be the judge. I slowed it down and brightened it to get a better look. It doesn't look like a woman, strangely. It looks more masculine, but who can really say? I don't know what or who it is, or even if it's an anomaly at all, but I will tell you this, the feeling of sadness and terror were definitely present that night in the cemetery. I've always had a strong sense of discernment and I consider myself an empath. I don't think I'll ever return to that place again. (laughs) And not just because I know I saw something, but because my heart breaks at the thought that the story is real, the sadness there most definitely is real. Poe's life was riddled with turmoil and death. He survived the death of his mother, foster mother, and wife. The common theme of the death of women in his works likely points to those losses. Annabel Lee was the last complete poem written by Poe and was published after his death in 1849. Critics have often pondered who Annabel Lee was, the most believed candidate being his wife who died two years prior. But the poem says that she was a maiden, and that would make you think she was unmarried. Some people believe he was speaking of a childhood sweetheart, Sarah Royster, but there's also our Annabelle Lee story. We know historically that Poe was stationed in Charleston in 1827. Or perhaps the poem served as Poe's longing for love and how it felt so lost for him, losing so many of the people he cared for. He's once stated, the death then of a beautiful woman is unquestionably the most poetical topic in the world. Or maybe he'd been carrying this secret love in his heart all those years, and sensing his own near death, decided it was a tale that needed to be told. If Anna of Charleston was really who the poem was about, I can't help but wonder what other strange and sad events Poe must have lived through. Was he not only a man of deep thought, macabre works, but also a man of secrets and brokenness? If you ever have the pleasure of visiting Charleston, I hope you'll take a little ghost tour in the Unitarian Cemetery. Whoever Annabelle is, she's not lost in some unknown grave anymore. Poe made certain she'd live on, their love forever immortalized by his words. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Vanessa, you've been watching Fable Collective, where we talk about cozy, creepy lore and mysteries. If you'd like to check out more history and hunts, click here.